actually say for himself many things under the sun. But what I want to do this morning, I think, through the Holy Spirit is help us to deal with um, trusting in the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with everything about us, trust in the Lord. Now on your sheet you'll see God is dealing with man's heart, which consists of what? Mind, will, and emotion, which is in our soul. Which is our soul. Mind, will, and emotion, which is our soul. Amen? You have a soul, so it consists of these three components. Mind, our will, and emotion. This is what he's addressing. Your mind, will, and emotion. He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Your heart is the center of who you really are, your being. And the center of your being is your, your will, your, your emotions, and your, and your mind. Three, three components are so important in your decision making. Can everybody agree with that? Amen. In your decision making. It says... A trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That means your emotions have to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Your mind has to be under control of the Holy Spirit. And your will has to be totally given over to God in order for you to trust Him wholeheartedly. Right? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. That's what it says here. The, the heart, the, the, the uh, soul, it also can be called the fleshly mind. Fleshly means what? Absolutely, next word. Carnal mind. And that which is earthy. That which you to make decisions based upon things of the world. Things of man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your what? own understanding. Your own understanding comes from where? Your heart, your emotions, and your will. You make decisions based on your emotions, heart, and will. If, you, if you're not trust in, trusting in the Lord, then you're trusting in what? Your heart, your emotions, and your will. Sometimes your emotions, you make decisions based on how you feel. Sometimes you base your, your decision on how, what you're thinking. Or what someone else has said. And then sometimes you base your, your decision on what you think, which has to do with your will. So Paul is, I mean, not Paul, but Solomon is saying here, uh, God is dealing with your mind, your will, and your emotions, which, in, which is our soul. Let me go back and say this. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You see what I'm saying? Now, if you if 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 you give your soul to Christ, you're gonna win it. If you keep it yourself, you're gonna lose it. Why? Because it has to do with the world. And the world system is passing away. <clears throat> now, Proverbs, uh, the answer here, it says Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. A familiar passage. Uh, to many, and it is, because I use it all the time. When people call me or I text someone in my concluding um, text, I'll say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. <clears throat> Lean down into your own understanding. But do they understand that? And when I quote that scripture, do I understand what I'm saying? A whole lot of time we quote scripture and have no idea what that scripture is saying. Amen. We just quote it. Amen. And sometimes we quote scripture... And we have no idea what it's saying because we don't know what it's saying. We, it sounds good. It's a good um, paraphrase, a good phrase to be said. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And suppose it, the guy would, would, would come back with you, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I know that's trust in the Lord with all your heart. We, we don't even know ourselves what it is to trust in the Lord. Hopefully that after this uh, little teaching this morning, We'll have a more understanding of how to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And we're going to lean on our own understanding. 
And leaning has a lot to do with what the world has out there. We don't trust God, but we trust the, trust the system. And we have all, all of our hope where? In the system. And the system is, is, is failing, and is failing, and it will fail. Uh, those things that you see, they are just temporal. The things that you don't see, though, are, those are eternal. He says, now, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. What does understanding mean to you just sitting your thing? What does understanding mean? Also, you're going through something. I need understanding here. How can I make a decision without understanding it? Sometimes I make a decision on a spur of a moment. <laughs> and I make many of those, <clears throat> and they always come back to haunt me. So to understand, have understanding, <clears throat> is good, because you have to have it. you got to make decisions on, based on what you, what you have to make a decision on. How can you make a decision on something you know nothing of? Isn't that right? How can you make a decision on you're going to buy a car? You need some understanding of that car and the function of the car and how the financial institution work and all of that before you make a decision to buy a car or home the same way. You got to make have an understanding of what you purchase here. What is the value of it here? How will it assist me in my in my in my home? And who I'm going, my house, my family, my babies, my, my grandchildren, how is it going to work for me? You have to have an understanding. You don't just, just go and buy something and have no understanding of it. I mean, I guess we have. I bought things to get home and wish I hadn't bought them because I didn't understand what it was. And then sometimes we buy stuff and it really served no purpose. We just bought it because it looked good. I bought it because someone else had it. But here, Jesus, what God is saying to us of us here, is that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean down into your own understanding. There is a place in our, in our growing and maturing where we cannot lean to our own understanding. We must trust the Lord for the, for the, to get the proper results of a decision. Am I right? Amen. The more information you have, the best, better decision you can make. Yeah. And that decision, that when you have this information, it has to come from a source that you can trust. Right? Yeah. The world system, you cannot what? Trust, trust it. Trust you can trust it in the sense of it, it's temporal setting, mm -hmm. but anything that's eternal, you cannot trust it because the world is, is temporal. And I think this is what Solomon is saying here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Because once we lean to our own understanding, we're picking up stuff from the system. Right? But when we trust in the Lord, we're picking up things from Him to help us make a good decision. And most of the time we make a decision, is a decision that based on the information that we receive from two sources. From the world... Or from the or from God, right? There is an in, in between here, right? Let's look at this. It says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He uh, He shall direct your path." Right? Mm -hmm. If you acknowledge Him, if you study, I think the Scripture says that the, the fear of the Lord is what. The beginning of knowledge. Knowledge. If you don't fear Jesus, you don't have any knowledge. And what I mean by fearing Jesus is not that you're scared of him like he's a ghost or a hand or he's going to cut your neck off. No, have a reverence and respect for him. For if he says something, have respect for that and know that it's for your best interest. Lean, don't lean to your own understanding. Because you lean to your own, you lean towards a what? A tree of knowledge of good and evil. It may be good, but it's not going to serve you in a, in, a, in a good foundation down the road. And I think we can use this word, <clears throat> and Jesus said, don't build your house on what? On a sand, but build your house on a rock. 
Because when the wind comes, the storm blows, they're going to blow your little, your little house made of whatever off the, it's going to stumble and fall. But if you build your house upon a rock, the house, but you're going to have, it, it will stand the storm. So there's two sources we can receive what? Uh, information. Uh, and, but if you allow your emotions to get it, and so many times our emotions actually cripple us. Yeah. Because in, in emotion, the first thing that comes up to our to our decision making is how we feel. How I feel. Or lust too. What I want. Lean down to our own understanding, but trust in the Lord. And then our emotions will come under the under the guise of the Holy Spirit. God doesn't want to take your emotion. What he wants to have your emotion do is get more godly, like Jesus' emotions. Coming to the Lord with your emotions. I just love this so much. Well, you got to allow Christ to help you make a decision on this, whatever it is. If your emotions are running your life, you're in trouble. Right? If your if your if your mind is in total control of everything you do, you're in trouble. Because it warns us here, lean not to where? Your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then it says here. Two two commands, two complementary pair of commands. We are told positively to trust in the Lord. Right? Negatively. We are told not to trust in our own understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, if we believe the word of God, and I believe the word, all scripture is given by what? Inspiration. And for reproof, for correction, and that a man of God may be thrown the furniture unto his own good works. It says here, don't, don't trust yourself. There's a place that we get in our spiritual maturity where we just don't what? Trust ourselves. I go back again. He said, lean not unto your own understanding. If I lean to my own understanding, I'm trusting what? Myself. He said, yes, go ahead. Um, Thank you. For example, before um, I actually got to this, I mean, trusting in the Lord, and you not to understand it. I used to hear my sister say this all the time. Whatever this and whatever decision she used to make, it was always, I gotta pray about it. I gotta ask the Lord. And then I was like, You know what you wanna do. To myself. I would always say, You know what you wanna do. So why you got that? You know, why you got to do that? But now I understand. Good point. Understand why she said what she said, you know, about I'm gonna ask God. Get understanding. Right, to get understanding. Get the leading of the spirit on that. Whether he wants me to go this way or that way or do this or do that. Because you hear people say all the time, I, I know what the Bible says, but I'm going to do this right now. I know what the Bible says, but I, I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something else right now. And you hear those people say, and they're not they're leaning totally on the what? Their own understanding. And down the road, they'll, they'll find that they made a, uh, made a decision that cost them something dearly. Amen. Dearly Amen. it cost them by leaning to your own understanding. Because you lean to your own understanding, you're leaning on the shoulders of the enemy. And the enemy is, is come what? To kill and to destroy. To murder. To kill and destroy. That's the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Then it says here, um, is a, the, the, uh, to trust in the Lord is, and to trust, uh, and to trust in the Lord, and negative, not to trust in our own understanding. These, those two things are mutually exclusive. One is to trust in the Lord. The other is to not to trust in yourself. But you have a will. So you get information from, from Christ. No, no information from Christ. You, all we do is lead to our own understanding. And we look back over our lives right now, up to our present time, and try to see what we, how we made decisions based on what we understood as based on the decision of, of trusting Christ. And it's, it's, a, it's a line of, 
away from Ms. Ms. Uh, Miles, you said this morning, a line of um, roadkill. Everything is roadkill. Everything we thought about, even if it were good, it was nothing but roadkill. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean down to what? Your own understanding. And so when you're going to make a decision, the best thing for you to do is pray about it and ask God to give you his, his say so on it. So, and you got you gotta know your scriptures. Because the devil can, you can say, Lord, please help me not lead them on understand. But if you don't know your scripture, you're still you're in trouble. Why? Because you don't know the scriptures. Right, so you're still leaning on your own. You're still leaning on your own understanding. God can't lead you if you don't know the scriptures. He can lead you a little bit, but you've got to know the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting the Lord with all my heart. I'm not leaning to my own understanding. Lord, help me here. Mm -hmm. Well, have you got scripture? Have you got some illustration? Have you got some teaching based on what Christ would do in a situation of this nature? If you don't have that, then you're still leaning well on your own understanding. And you can't keep leaning on your own, lean on your own understanding just because someone else is leaning on their understanding. That's why emotions get sometimes when we uh, we lean on, I got a good friend here, and I don't want to lose my friend. So I go along with what he says, mm -hmm. or what she says. At the same time, we act, we have to know what God wants us to do. Amen. But this friend is more important to us. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have his relationship or her relationship than build my relationship with Christ where I can mature. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work that way. Somewhere in our decision making, along we don't we don't trust in ourselves. We trust in the Lord, a sister, a brother. We don't want to say anything to offend them, do we? Mm -hmm. No. But sometimes we may have to say something because mm -hmm. we don't agree with them mm -hmm. because of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we're making a decision based on what we think, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We're based on the decision where we know that exclusively what Christ wants, we want that done, we do it in the Spirit. Here again it says, "Those, these two things are the we cannot depend on our own ability to understand anything of God. Ain't that right? If we don't have the, the leading of the Spirit, we don't have any understanding. We can look at it. Before I met Jesus, I didn't even look at the Bible. And I would go to church. I don't think I've been to church before I met Jesus. I guess in 15 years. My uncle passed, my cousin passed. I make excuses not, not to go. I just was interested. But after I met Jesus, then the scripture began to open up because I had a, I had him inside of me. He said, when I come, I will lead you and guide you into what? All oh, truth. Sure. And so we gotta, we gotta, we so if we're going to lean into our own, if he's going to lead and guide us into all truth, then we have to stop lead, leading ourselves. You go your way, I go mine. I don't care. Well, what I'll make you feel good. And a lot of that feel good stuff is around too. What that makes you feel good. You do what you want to do. I tolerate it, but as long as you don't spit over me, it's all right. You do what you want to do, I do what I want to do. But that's how you, but he's telling the believer, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. For we walk by faith and what? Not by sight. That's in Corinthians 5.17. So if you're going to begin to walk by faith, you cannot even trust what? Yourself. If you're walking by faith and not by sight. Yes, sir. So I got to see something. I got to know it's true before I begin to walk. When you're in trouble, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so that means we're, 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 we're dependent on Jesus to lead us in that area that he wants us to go. Now if you're trusting in yourself, then you, 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 you're trusting in what you see or what you intellectually know or something you, you perceive in your own mind. But you, when you're walking by faith, you're actually walking by leading of the Holy Spirit. And, and the scriptures. 
Now he said, if you if you are truly, if you are to truly trust him, we have to uh, let go of our what? Pride. Pride. Pride, pride, pride is a pride is a killer boy. Amen. I even now I suffer with pride. Yep. It is a killer. Yes. And if you think you don't have pride, you got pride. Amen. If you think you're all right, you you so humble, uh, a butter wouldn't even melt in your mouth. I'm sorry. Uh, you, 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 you got a lot of pride. And you got so much pride, you don't even think you got pride, you're in trouble. Am I right, Jay? You're in trouble. You can't receive anything in the Lord. You can talk about Jesus, you can read scripture about Jesus, you can even pray some prayers. But I tell you what, you still got pride. Pride is the first first thing that 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 uh, that that I think the scriptures teaches that lean down to your own pride. Because pride got a way of working around things. Amen. Because pride is so selfish. That it don't want to do anything but exactly what it wants to do. Pride. Now, he said, <laughs> Pride uh, it wants to keep our programs and we, that we talked about when we first came over here. I remember the days that we talked in the office. We were talking about things that we thought the Lord wanted to get rid of. <laughs> and we, we talked about a lot about that. And at the same time, it was like pulling teeth. Amen. It was like pulling teeth. I said, well, look, so many times we said, well, we, we, we moved this. Well, what can we replace it with? Mm -hmm. I said, I, I really don't know. But I did know it wasn't helping us. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it wasn't helping us. And it was causing a lot of uh, stress and yes. uh and the other things in the, in the fellowship, mm -hmm. uh, the times that we wanted to um, uh, keep on with revivals and mm -hmm. things of that nature, mm -hmm. we uh, we cut them out mm -hmm. because it, it didn't really add anything. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of cooking, a whole mm -hmm. lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, and people fussing, and <laughs> and <laughs> fussing on a piece of cake and yeah. hiding yeah. cake and stuff. Yeah. Macaroni, macaroni yeah. and cheese. Yeah. 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 So we, we, Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, do something about this. So we, we just, God just phased it out. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We didn't say too much about it, but we know we, we won't for it. He just phased it out. Mm -hmm. Then this other program of Pastor's anniversary. Mm -hmm. Jason, I was up that morning. Jason going to cut the Pastor's anniversary too. He said, people love that. I said, well, I don't think it's, <laughs> true. I, don't think it's part of, true. I don't think it's part of the thing here. We're just getting rid of it. And so we phased that out. And uh, it phased out. And the people didn't even know it was phased. Just phased it out. We're not having this yet. It's phased it out. And God did all the phasing. God did all the arranging, all that kind of stuff. And we didn't push it either. But we, uh, I'm telling you, God is good. And so that would be, we, we weren't leaning to where our own understanding, but we're leaning on the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit removes something. He removes it slowly. Slowly. Just to, to, have to stop doing something sends too much shock to the system. Yeah. But over a, over a period of time, he begins to move things. Yeah. And so we see, and he replaces it with, with Christ. Yeah. So I like this. I like this. I, I I actually hate, when I was having these anniversaries and all this, I actually hate them. I wanted to sit with the in the in the crowd right there, yeah. but these people had already table on the set and go make me sit out. They probably both had problem with that. Be exclusive that sitting off over here by ourselves. Because we went to uh, somebody's birthday party. Oh, Adams, remember Adams? And while we sit back there in the back, we supposed to be on the front. We sitting back there to the top. The top is going. And both, we were hesitant to go to, I said, where you going to sit there? I said, where are you going to sit with it? I said, I really don't know, but I think I'm going on the end <laughs> where I won't be seen. Mm -hmm. You see, a servant, he doesn't glow for life. Mm -hmm. And he's seen, he wants to be just there to be served and to help out whenever he can. Mm -hmm. And see, your pride, on, your pride said, get it, get, yeah. get it the head table. Yeah. 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 I deserve to be a deserve to be the head table. Yeah, I deserve to be the head table. How? Who deserves Somebody put you in there and tell you, it won't Jesus. <laughs> Get that us another story. Even our best laid plans, human plans, 
cannot begin to approach the magnificent sanctity of God's plan. God has a plan for us. Yes, sir. And we are talking this morning about and uh, he won't de deviate from his plan. Because God is perfect, he's got a perfect plan. The thing is that we are imperfect, that's why he challenges us not to trust in our own self, but trust in him. Because he has the perfect plan. But we have to make a decision who we're going to trust. We're going to trust ourselves. We're going to trust our pastor. We're going to trust our denomination. We're going to trust some church. We're going to trust some dogma. Do I'm going to trust Jesus. I'm going to be led by him. When I'm not trusting him, he's going to make sure that I understand that he's not. I'm not trusting him. Sometimes in this growth thing, you, you, you start out trusting Jesus. You think you are, but you're really not. Whole lot that is you. Well, but over a period of time in growth, you begin to distinguish between that which is Christ and that which is me. So, it's not done overnight. And I, I, I want to say this: you don't get this in a book. You don't learn this at a at a at a at a, at a school. You don't. This is life experience. See, when Christ calls you, He calls you to fellowship with Him. Now, to fellowship with Him, there had to be some things that you want, you desire, you love. You have to abandon them. Well, that's why He says that. Lean not unto your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So I got to get rid of some things. Mm -hmm. And as, as Christ leads me, as I read the scriptures and find an illustration in the scriptures and teaching uh, in the scriptures, then I began to, to hear Christ's voice. Well, mm -hmm. he was talking to you all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that, you, you, you've been listening to that, that system out here all the years. Yes. Those voices have to be quietened down. Mm -hmm. And so obeying God, yeah. they become less intrusive in your decision making. Yes. That's true. Yes. You see, yeah. but if you're leaning to your own understanding, all you hear is old voices from the system. Yeah. When you first start out, that's what you hear. You say you got saved the moment yes. you trusted Christ. Yeah. But now he wants to save you from the system and save you from the voices of the system. Yes. So that's a process by which he's still calling, calling and chasing and reproving. He's calling, chasing and reproving and scourging. He's doing all of that. Mm -hmm. And because you love him, you want to follow him through the word, through, through good sound teaching, you begin to hear his voice. Well. You begin to hear him. When... Uh, yeah, acknowledge him too, but then I'm going to hear, get this here part first. Uh, this young man here, and your, <coughs> your baby. Uh, Jordan, Rain, uh, Nacho. When they hear your voice, you could be in a crowd, stadium full of folks, and you'll holler out. Jordan, Ray, Claudia, <coughs> they'll have no problem understanding what it's not was. Until they grow to hearing it, they will they were, they were, they respond to a voice that's not his voice. That's why Jesus said, if you follow me, you have no occasion of what? Stumbling. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep will not follow the voice of a stranger. So you can't hear. Mm -hmm. And this is again where I think that uh, Proverbs is so important on this topic here. Lean not to your own understanding. See, your own understanding has a voice also. Mm -hmm. Well, that voice is the voice of the flesh. Mm -hmm. yes. that, and also that voice could be the voice of a demon mm -hmm. that's influencing the flesh. Mm -hmm. Lean not unto your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your what? Heart. 
Acknowledge him in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Over the years, I've seen Jay grow, I've seen Errol grow, I've seen many of us grow. And the way you grow over the years is you abandon some things along the way. Amen. So you actually see another person grow. Amen. As he abandoned certain things along. Basketball used to be a favorite. Me and Jay and Earl. <laughs> and uh, we just played ball all the time. Up there at Monte Vet. Mm. They played with uh, old cold pit up there. But over the years, we still love basketball. But Christ has called us away from that love, from that luster. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. I look at basketball, still look at basketball. But now I can do a halftime, I can go to bed. Yeah. There was a time I stayed at 1 and 2 o'clock <laughs> trying to see what the end going to be. Yes, yes. But now I look, I look at it, I, I'm looking, I even look at um, the Warriors. And sometimes by halfway the game, I, I said, I'm, I'm going to see you later. <laughs> You, you can actually leave. And you can actually have a TV on and not even watch it. You can actually leave something because what Christ has for you is more fulfilling than that thing that you, that you hold on to for, for, for dear life. Right. Uh, I, to, I say that because you have to learn to hear his voice. And to hear his voice, there has to be some place you began to be obedient yes. to the word. Yes, have to be obedient to the word. And if you're not obedient to the word, what happens is you can't hear his voice. Well, uh, boys, forgive. Ask to forgive. Well, you're not forgiven. What, what am I, I don't have anything I said to you. What did I say to you? This is, I believe, what Christ is saying. I don't have anything to say to you. You have to take care of this matter here. I can't lead you away from something mm -hmm. if you still hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Gretchen, I, this, this gentleman, uh, they don't know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, wanted their life. So bitter, you can't even think straight. Some individuals, some believers are so bitter, they can't even think straight. And if they're bitter, they can't even hear Jesus. Mm -hmm. their, their bitterness is what's leading and guiding them. Bitterness. Yes. Yeah. That root of bitterness is so deep. And it springs up every now and then. And actually grab our emotions, well. our will, and our minds. Mm -hmm. And you have to be the one to, who wants who wants to go with Jesus that uh, I was preaching this morning on the bride. If you want to make yourself ready, these are some of the things you have to well, rid yourself of and not leaning on that thing. Because mm -hmm. that thing can actually feed your soul. Yes, yes. Some people can actually hate to the fact that if they stop hating, they die. Because hate is what makes them live. Their emotions are, are torn and they, and they just hate everything so they can live. But once they, they, they that emotions and and that thing had been given to the cross. He crucified the cross. Well, and they that are crucified are no longer are living in that type of environment. Mm -hmm. The uh, the part of the people that hold on to things that don't belong to God. I mean, just, just don't even belong to them. And they still listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to what? Something to keep that thing active and alive. Let me say this to you. If you haven't forgiven, uh, I'm afraid that that at the Christ bride, you, 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 this is going to be quite a tough day. <laughs> you can see me? You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't, my bride. If she's holding on to something against me or against someone else, she can't really love me like she should. Mm -hmm. Well, because that thing has yes, it. Yes, right. well. And I yes, can't really love her because that thing has me. Mm -hmm. It's so true. true. And then mm -hmm. I can't. I, I really can't make myself ready. Mm -hmm. Why? Because.
because I'm leaning to my own understanding mm -hmm. instead of leaning to the scriptures wow. and, and leading the spirit to lead me out of that stuff. Yes. So we can, and you're doing a great job. I, I praise God for you, man. Mm -hmm. And I love you. You're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. On teaching mm -hmm. and expressing Christ. At the same time, we have to look at those things deep, deep inside of us. Yeah. At the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Deep inside of us. Mm -hmm. We look good out here, but inside, just like dead men bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Christ is one, wants a bride mm -hmm. that's compatible with him. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yeah. He can't have a bride with that stuff in, in, in her heart. Mm -hmm. nope. Who leaned to the world's understanding. Mm -hmm. And now you're standing before him to be judged. Mm -hmm. And the secret things of men's heart will be exposed at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, and the Bible says that. Yes, All judgment has been given to the hands of the Son. Yes, yes. We, we, we've got to be careful. Yeah. We don't want to lean to our own understanding. What do you want me to do, Christ? Yes, yes Lord. Well. Yes, Lord. What is, what is your What is your goal? Mm -hmm. Well. And sometimes you may be confused, mm -hmm. but you stay there long enough, you can hear it. Yes, sir. And he'll bring some scripture or whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. He'll put it in perspective with his desire, his will. Mm -hmm. He put it in perspective. Sometimes you are uh, 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 sitting in, in the car, and I said, "Oh, the world this mean Jesus would be doing here. I can understand this. The Lord wants to come and share something. Either I can receive it, or I can reject it. I'll go back and lean into my own. Oh, yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. But over a period of time, you learn how to hear his voice. And you begin to respond to his voice. And when you begin to respond to his voice, you don't respond like a natural man. You respond like a what? Spiritual man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big difference. Yes, sir. That's what uh, Solomon here, I mean, Solomon. He did say, lean not unto your own understanding, because your own understanding is pitiful. <laughs> and if you read the book of Ecclesiastes and, and, and study his life, you can see that uh, Solomon was, a, was a, a tremendous writer and thinker and a leader, but he leaned to his own understanding. And it was, he was touched by fleshly, beauty, trees, and gardens, and flowers, and and uh, he, was a, he was a great man of, of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's why he says that after it all over it, he said, lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Acknowledge him. Everything you do. You know, and he'll make a way for you. And a lot of times we, we, we have ways made for us because we don't trust him. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord, make a way. At the same time, you're thinking how to, how to make a way yourself. Well, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, help me. At the same time, you, you still think about how to help yourself. Because his help, a lot of times, is helping you out of self. And I think it's one of the biggest, biggest uh, goals that the cross has achieved. But we have to realize that that's what Christ wants. Yes, sir. To help us out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Help us out of selfishness. Mm -hmm. Help us out of fleshly yeah. thinking. Yeah. Fleshly walking. Fleshly yeah. talking. Fleshly desire. He wants to help us out of that. Yes, but we can't do it if we're leaning on what? Our, our own understanding. Because our own understanding keeps us locked up in the fleshly realm. So, so. Mm -hmm. Lean not to your own understanding. And here he said, the foolishness of uh, the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you find that at first. Uh, first, of, go that please. First Corinthians chapter uh, one, verse twenty-five. And, and uh, again, I think I think Paul knew all about this. Uh, what what uh, Solomon has said, because he puts it right on top of you. One twenty-five. Mm -hmm. See, he says because of the fullness of of God, what is wiser than men. men, and the weakness of God is stronger than, than men. men. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, you do some foolish stuff. You trust in the cross. God can save you, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's foolish to the to the normal person. Who don't realize that the cross has saving power. Yes, sir. But it only works when you trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
foolishness. And the strength that, that we have, once we are under Christ's authority, we don't use our strength. Yes. We allow him to use it through us. Yes, uh, I get a, I get a, a, little, a little illustration that uh, that truck that you see got going down the road, that flatbed, got that hump in it. Mm -hmm. You ever seen it? Mm -hmm. I saw it a lot of times. What about that big hump in that truck for? Well, you see a number come by, looks almost like it. It's got a load on it, mm -hmm. and that hump is straight now. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's there. It's got power, but it submits to the weight. Well. Humility. That's what that hump is. Mm -hmm. I can do it. But I'm going to humble myself so that I can carry the load. Amen. Sometimes we, we don't humble ourselves. We can't carry a load because humble is not part of it. We still are, are, are in our strength, yes. in our own strength. Oh, yeah. I can take care of it. I can knock it down. I can get it fixed. No. Settle down and let God work it out. Yes, sir. You got the strength to do it in the flesh, but let God do it in the spirit. That's what I saw. Strength. And humility. He also says in the book of Proverbs, right over at chapter 14, verse 23, verse 12. You can stop me anytime here, verse 12, uh, 13, and 14. That's what I like about the book. If you want to know something, you go to the book. 14. There's a the way, and we quote it all the time, no matter I quote it, there's a way that seems right to man, for so man is trusted in what? His own understanding. It seems right. But you know what? It looks right. I wish I had made that decision. Sounds right. I wish I had never been involved with this thing. And you'll believe it. You didn't check with Jesus. You wouldn't make the sin yourself. And by doing so, the results of that making the sin came back on you. He said, there is a way that seems right to man. But the end of it is always death. Now, now what he's saying here also is that, is that you have to make a decision if you're believing. I'm not talking about unbelievers. They always make decisions based on the system. The best, best of the system at all. I got I got swim with sharks. Well, you swim with sharks, you ain't eaten by the sharks. But a believer can't swim with sharks. He swims above sharks. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, he said, well, there's a way that seems right. And sometimes we have leaders in positions and we just go along what they say, but it comes from the from the system. You can't go along with everybody because to say something that sounds good or to give some hope, some hope that reaches <clears throat> just this far Come on here. and not into eternity. Come on here. Mm -hmm. See, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I have hope in what you call, I have hope in blah, 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 blah. Well, that hope is no good if it's not based on eternal value that Christ had. Yes, sir. That hope. See, the things that we involve with are just, just temporal. Your, your house, your car, your breathing, mm -hmm. you yeah. are just temporal. Mm -hmm. So we have to see beyond the, the world system, what the world has to offer us, and see what Christ has to offer us yeah. in eternity. Yes. And that's what we based our thinking on, based our decision making on. Based every move that we make has been based on God's eternal value on what he has for us. Yes, sir. If not, then we're just trusting our saying. We build a house on what? Saying. You don't not build a house alone on a solid foundation. So we go before the judgment seat of Christ, all it does is wash it off. All we got is all we got is Jesus. And that's good. But uh, it can't reward us for anything because um, everything we did was out of our own thinking. I I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I, I I do the best I can. So you get some advice. Come from system. You read a book, how to get along with your wife. If somebody, if this guy that wrote the book, he ain't with his wife. He ain't with his wife no more. He wrote the book. You see what I'm saying? And a whole lot of people that, that write these books, man, uh, get some good advice, but they don't take it themselves. 
They're all messed up. Best place to go is go what? To the scripture. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. What all your what? Heart. And lean not to your own understanding. See? And when you make a decision, also I think this, this is crucial, is that you understand trying to find out is this yours or is this the Lord's? Let, let, let me say this. Yes. Satan is so subtle yes, yes. that he can slip stuff in yeah. and it seems like it's the Lord. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when you've been out there a long time, what you want to do is question everything. Mm -hmm. Is this the Lord? Is this the Lord? I don't, I don't know what this is. Because I've been there, so I don't know what this is. But you just keep your heart open. That you want the answer from your Lord. Mm -hmm. He'll give it to you. Yes, Sometimes just one word. Trust is a, is, a, is a key element of the believer's walk with Christ. Amen. You have to trust him. Amen. You have to trust him. If you trust him, it's going to work all right. Amen. You got to trust him. And you can't trust them if you don't love them. Amen. I won't say that. If you love yourself more than child Christ, you can't trust them. You only trust them for those things that you can see and get your hands on. You, you don't trust them for those things that you don't see. They're all by faith and not by sight. Mercy. Trust. Trust is trust. I trust, but your trust has to have a uh, 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 a person uh, that you love. Mm -hmm. I trust, but you trust what? You trust this. Mm -hmm. You don't trust him, you trust in this. Mm -hmm. So trust has, is always found in something that you love and respect and you honor it. My trust in the Lord. Where is your trust? I, I trust Jesus, but you see, if that happens, you're in trouble. Amen. No but with Jesus. It is, it is I am. You trust him or you're not trusting him. And what I mean, when you're growing, you're trusting him, but at the same time, you may make some mistake, but your, your whole heart is set on him. Yes, yes, yes. Your trust is in Jesus. Yes. Knowing that he has elevated you and brought you out of, out of, up on the, on the authority of darkness into his marvelous light. Knowing that while you follow him, you're going to make some mistake. They're not deliberate, but you're going to make mistakes. In order to make mistakes, you are, when you make mistakes, you're learning how to walk. Yes, sir. If you don't make mistakes, you're not walking. You're just, you're just you're sitting there. Well, well. He made mistakes. I remember when um, Rain was a little bit of baby. She was about, she was just pulled up on the side of the bed. Not on the side, at the coffee table, right? And we had, we had, a, had a little scarf on the table. And I, I see her pull up. I said, oh, Lord, can I get her that before she snatched the scarf on the table? Mm -hmm. Because pulling the table, getting up, you just grab it. Mm -hmm. yeah, everything's in the floor. Mm -hmm. So making mistakes and growing, I didn't get on her. I didn't get on her. Well, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get trying to walk. Right. So get, when you're trying to walk, mm -hmm. you're going to make some mistakes. Uh -huh. You're going you're gonna to break some things. Mm -hmm. You're going to turn some things over. Someday you're going to fall flat on your face, bust your face well, but you're still trying to walk. Yes. In the spiritual journey, the same thing. Christ knows that you're trying to walk. Yes. And, you're, and you're trusting. Well. And you're listening for him. After you get a certain age, you get to this point where you don't want to make another step unless he's said so. Yes, sir. You don't want to make a step on your own because you what? You're now resorted back to trusting in your own self. So before you make a decision, I think I ought to go over here. Ask the Lord about it. Yeah. Ask the Lord about it. See what he said. Sometimes we want to ask the Lord about it because we know exactly what he's going to say. He's going to say no. And also, that means that what? You're listening. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. That's another way you can know. 
you, if you already know what God's going to say, why even get into this, 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 this drawn out conversation? Uh, why, why? I should go. No, you shouldn't go. You already know you shouldn't go. Should I, uh, should I go uh, what is what that? Should I go Should I Should I say? In, in, your, in your first growing, that is possible. But after a while, somewhere, you know exactly what God wants you to do. And you don't have to ask it. You know exactly what God wants you. That's been led by the Spirit and been taught by the Spirit and been counseled by the Spirit and been strengthened by the Spirit in your daily walk. Walk with Him. He'll talk with you. Trust in Him. And you'll find there's no greater person to trust than the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust. You can't trust something you don't love. I trust my wife. I trust my daughter. I trust you. But I don't know you, but I trust you. See what I'm saying? That put the onus on you to, to conduct yourself and behave yourself as a child of God. See what I'm saying? Anytime you trust Christ, then you're to reflect Christ in your decision making. Well, right, Jay? Yeah. If money is running your life, then you don't make a decision without you have money involved. Mm -hmm. True. True. Greed okay. makes a lot of our decisions. Mm -hmm. Ignorance makes a lot of our decisions. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I know a man down, down the country that's messed up a whole life. We, we, we talked about it in my sister's side. How he screwed up everything by making wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. Didn't check with nobody, didn't talk with nobody, just made decisions. Based on what he thought or what he, how he felt or what somebody said to him at the same time, they have a mess that up. So if you're going to make a decision, <clears throat> make sure it's based on scripture. And also, something else will help you, help me a lot here, is that the fellow that's been on the trail for a long time, your mom, your dad, your mom, your dad, those that you know, respect, and love, ask them. Amen. Then, don't actually settle for that. Pray about it. Once you get some information from anybody, even from me, or your or any brother here, you get some information, don't, no matter what it is, it may sound good, but you pray about it and see what God says. Yes, sir. Typical that comes out of my mouth, you check it. Come down to anybody's mouth as a child of God, you check it. Amen. You respect us, you love us, you admire us. And you, and, but at the same time, that's why I gave you this scripture. Make sure you check it out yourself. Because you don't want to be what? Leaning to your own understanding. When you get up in the morning, ask God to lead you and to guide you the rest of the day. And even during that day, sometimes you got to stop and say, Lord, Lord, help me here. Yeah. I like a little love. Uh, Joy. Help me, Lord. I was told that by Mr. James that sometimes Jordan walked through and I said, Help me, Lord. And it gets like that sometimes. You just need his help. Don't get mad, don't get upset, but just say, Help me, Lord. Yes, sir. And like and like um uh, rain years ago, the place of it at the um Went to the store, she was about five, went to the store <clears throat> and got a, bought me some of that for the car. Was on the way back to, to the car. And this lady was having a problem with her getting a car started. And uh, well, I had Joe right, right by the hand, and she stopped me. I looked, and she looked. Mm -hmm. She didn't say that she looked over there. And I said, well, look, apparently, I'm supposed to go over here. Because <laughs> she had that feeling that the lady needs something. Mm -hmm. And so I went and gave her a jump. Mm -hmm. I'm saying some things we do registers with our memory for that. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do things with your loved ones that make a difference. I'm not talking about, look, don't get carried away with buying a lot of stuff. Amen. 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 Amen.
because before you know it, they're <laughs> packed over in a corner, in a box, big box. And what do they got? They ain't got nothing. But things you instilled in that person in turn love for Christ, respect, kindness, joy, and love, and honor, and respect for the parents, and things like that. They, those things are going to last down through the years. Well, you see, see, the devil can't take that and throw it away. That's, that's intangible because that's invisible. But it's, it's a real thing, kindness and mercy yes. and compassion and love and joy. That's real. Yes, sir. Give your child something real. Don't just give them a toy and send them off somewhere. No. Give them something that will last that's real. Give them some love. Some kindness. Some good talk. Amen. Amen. Let me see. Uh, most of us have a desperate. Uh, I'm sorry. To do that. We must have approve. Must approve of God's ways, even when we can't comprehend them. You don't understand them, right? Mm -hmm. But you gotta uh, kind of go along with it. Right. Adam and Eve repented, trusting in themselves and not in God. Right. I'm sure after they found that they were guilty, they repented. Amen. A trust in themselves and not in God. Also in Isaiah 5, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, tells us why we often don't understand what God is doing. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways, and thank God they're not, my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It places God in a unique position of knowledge because it's above your thoughts. Your thoughts are sensual, your thoughts are devilish, your thoughts are of this world and not of God's thoughts. Also, Christ said in the book of, uh, uh, oh, that book, please. John chapter chapter 8. We're not, we may not read all of it, but chapter 8. Because this is a good teaching here. Chapter 8. That's in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They will say. <laughs> uh, chapter 8. I think it begins around about verse 21. <clears throat> Will somebody read that for me, please? Who's there? He then says, said, go ahead. No, no, go. Go. <clears throat> then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Mm -hmm. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he said, well, I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, you are my, you are and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, yes. and I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. Mm -hmm. And I said, Therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, mm -hmm. ye shall die in your sins. Mm -hmm. And then said, said they unto him, who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, mm -hmm. I have many things to say to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. And they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. Amen. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is a, this is a crucial time here for the disciples mm -hmm. and those that were listening. You trust me. Or you don't. Because if you don't trust me, you'll die in your sin. Mm -hmm. You'll die in your sin. Mm -hmm. He put it right on the line. Mm -hmm. And I, say, I think he's saying the same thing that was said in the book of Isaiah. I am from above. <laughs> you're from beneath. <laughs> my thoughts are not like your thoughts, and, your, and my ways are not like your ways. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the, the action of the scripture complement each other in the sense of trusting the Lord with all your heart. 
Lean not where? Unto your own understanding. There's only one person that we can really trust, and that's Jesus. I want to say it again. There's only one person we can really trust, and that's Jesus. I trust my wife, but I trust Jesus. I trust Jesus. I trust James. I trust Jesus. I trust him. When I trust Jesus, it doesn't matter what anybody else does because I trust him. Because I know that we're all human. And we make mistakes. What are omission or commission? We make mistakes. The most important thing is to trust the one that doesn't make mistakes. Who gives us proper advice at all times. And that's God Almighty. Amen? God sees the whole picture while we see only a tiny corner of it. To trust in the Lord with all our heart means we can't place our own right understanding our own right to understand above. This right is to this right to direct our lives the way he sees fit. He has a right. He made us. And he's given us the best advice we can to help our lives to grow and to mature and the children of God. When we insist on God always making sense to our finite minds, we are setting ourselves up for spiritual trouble. And I, I agree with that. You trust in the Lord because God knows everything from the beginning to the ending. So some things become before us that we have no understanding of. So we have to what? Try to walk by faith and not by sight. Our limited understanding can easily lead us astray. And that's in 16.25. Let's go there. Proverbs 16.25. We don't want to miss none of this good stuff this morning. 1625. 1625. Uh, uh, verses. Uh, <coughs> uh, 1625, verse 25. All right? Would you read that verse for me? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. That was, that was, that was, you remember all the passages? That was in the 14th chapter. Mm -hmm. So it was repetitious here, showing that, that part, uh, Solomon is saying the same thing. If you don't trust him, you are leading yourself away. If you don't trust him, you're leading yourself straight to the paths of death. Of death. No matter how good it looks, how good it sounds, it all leads to death. Yeah. Satan has nothing but it's stuff that leads to death. No matter how good it sounds, how great it sounds. How, I, look at these poor fellows. Let me say this. These poor fellows in the, in the gym the other day. And this guy, his name is Stephan. His name is Stephan. And I said, great. I hollered at him, give him a fifth bump. He said, hey, man, you're not so great, man. I said, I saw you the other night. You were looking good, man. He said, where you see me at? <laughs> his name was Stephan. I said, I was talking about Golden State. Steph put up all the three points. He's old. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I said, I wish I had his money. I said, well, I don't know. You may have to bow down to somebody who got his money. He said, you, you look good, right? He said, I've been satisfied with what I got. I said, be satisfied with what you got. Because when you get money, you got to do some mean things. And that means it's controlling you. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the son of man has no place to live. Satan offered them the kingdoms of the world. Offered them their, all the glory of the world. All the religious systems. But he turned it all down. Why? Because once Satan gets attached to you, you become his little puppet. And I've seen certain basketball players, especially basketball players, move from this little humble person to this arrogant person that you see now. What drop the man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Money will buy your soul. And Nimrod was a what? A hunter of souls. Mm -hmm. Satan is a what? A hunter of souls. How do he purchase soul? He buys them. He buys them. Sell a lie here, buy them. Sell another lie here, and before you know it, you're in his clutches. 
That's why lean not into your own sin, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, and he will direct your path. Our limited understanding can lead us to say there is a way that appears right, but the end leads to death. When we choose to direct our lives according to what seems right to us, we are we often reap disaster. Go to Judges. Look at that. I preached that one time back in the 80s over at a certain church, and I ain't been back since. That's right. That's right. And what made it so bad, it was on a Christmas Eve. And I know they weren't expecting anything of that. Judges. When you get there, holler. You got it? Go ahead and read it for me. In those days there were no there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That's what we have right now. Right now. You do what you think is right. I do what I think is right. Every man does that is right in his own eyes. Nobody's listening what? Listening to the Lord. And every one of us have a different opinion about everything. I ask you a question. You give me your answer, as James the question, he give me his answer. And then I got answer. So there's a whole lot of answers going out here, but none of them has anything to do with the Lord. Lord, I won't give you one answer. That's his answer, and another is not mixed with anything else. It can't be mixed either, Jay. Anybody here, it can't be mixed with anything else but Jesus. Now listen, when you read, I learned this over the years, you can read and get material from other places. But the other place is not the authority. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the only authority you have. Amen. So you can take other stuff from, from other places and read it for your knowledge and your, for, for your illustration and to get you get a point over. But the only authority we have here is the Word of God. Amen. We only have one book that's authority. That's the Word of God. Almighty God. Nothing else can compare with it. That's why the devil don't want it in your school, he don't want it in your home, he don't want it in the church. Every culture yeah. has tried to get tried to get God to approve of its definition of right and wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But God never changes his standards, never change. Never change. Yeah. We're gonna look, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna look at that one. Every person must make a decision whether to live his life or her life according to the personal preference or according to the unchanging word of Almighty God. He said, I change not. He is in the final one. The God that cannot lie is appointed to man once to die and after that the judgment. We often will not understand how God is causing all things to work together for good. But when he, but when we trust him with all of our hearts, we know that he is. He will never fail us, never leave us, nor forsake us. Let's go to the last two Psalms there, and then we'll close. Psalms 119 and 42, and someone has to turn to uh, Psalm 19, 119 and 33, and then the last person to go to Philippi, uh, chapter 2, verse 13. Psalms 1, 19 and 42. My word is forever settled in heaven. You got that one yet? 1, 19 and 42? And someone go to 1, 19 and 33? And someone go to uh, Philippians 2, 13. A closing year. We got anyone? Go back first. Okay. Which one do you read? Psalms 119, 142. Okay. Your righteousness is an internal righteousness, and your law is true. Amen. Mm -hmm. His righteousness is eternal. Yep. His law is true. Mm -hmm. It changes not. Mm -hmm. God said it, and that's the way it is. It's yep. set. Yep. It's written in stone. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, 119 and 33. Paula, you got it? Establish my footsteps in your word, and do not let any iniquity have dominion over me. Amen. Amen. Trust him. Mm -hmm. Trust him. And when I say trust him, trust in Christ, it's going to bring you away from a lot of stuff. Some of your dearest friends are going to cut you loose. Yeah. Yes. Some of the ideas and things we had for ourselves, Christ wants to call us away from those. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Wait, I got an idea what I want to do. What I want to. No, no he can call you away from that. Yeah. You should be open to him so he can call you away from the plan that you have made. Yes, sir. He got plans for you. But if you got plans, then you're not leaning to where? Well. You're on, you're, you're on God's understanding, but you're still trying to get your program working. That's something you have to pray about to the Holy Spirit, too, to help you see. If you got a program working to what you want to be, then it's not what God wants you to be. All right? You can't have the same program that God got if you got a program that you want to be what you want to be. God got a program he wants you to be just like Christ. Amen. Amen. What's that last one? Uh, Philippians 2.13. Who got that? Someone read that for me, please. For it is God who operates in you both the willing and the working for his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. He is good Amen. pleasure. So his good pleasure is in you. The working in you. What Christ in you. Our, our thing is to trust him that he can get that accomplished. But when it leans our own understanding, then he, he cannot get a copy because our will is not in operation with his. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean down to your own understanding. And look, you got to learn how to trust God. Over a period of time, but when you first get saved, that don't mean you, you're bad. It just means you ain't trusting. But over a period of time, if you have a love for Christ, that love is placed in a system of, of obedience. obedience. Lord, I don't care what you say, I want to do. Amen. You'd be surprised if you say in the morning. You do have prayer in the morning. I hope it's not inside your bed or your you know, table or in medication. The, the motion, wherever you are, even in a car. Lord, whatever you want today, I'm ready. Uh uh. You don't open a can of worms yet, boy. Because you're telling God that whatever you've got planned for today, I'm good. Whatever you got planned for today. Whatever you got planned for today. See what I'm saying? But most time we get up, our own plans are working here. What I'm going to be doing today. You can have your plans too. But at the same time, God's plan is appeal to your plan. You can start out doing something, but if God calls you away, can you go? <laughs> but if God speaks to you about something, can you stop doing what you do and do what he wants you to do? Are we so wrapped up in our own self and selfishness that we, we're going to maintain doing what we want to do? And then we get come to the fellowship and praise the Lord and give him glory. How can you praise someone you haven't been obedient to? Trust the Lord with all your heart and lay away, not unto your own understanding. So it's a good message, but not by me, but by Solomon. If you look at Solomon's history, you can, you can actually say that this man was sorry for all the stuff that he had done. And the time that God was trying to lead him, he just trusted himself. Mm -hmm. He had three other wives, mm -hmm. and seven, no, seven other wives, and three other wives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, the first thing, this, this is the first thing that pops in our mind is that he had a good time. He wasn't. No, he wasn't miserable. What I'm saying is that it wasn't about the ladies. Because all those things out of contracts, out of certain things they had to do for kingdoms, and it had set the door to the order. You know? And he probably didn't have anything to do with them. They were just there. You see, and that's what that way the culture was back then. then. You can have as many wives you want. You see what I'm saying? It was the it was the fact that they they they, they brought their gods in what they worship 
how they felt, and he tried to please everybody. And brother, when you begin to serve Jesus Christ, you can't please everybody. You bet your biggest goal that you have as a believer, and I have as a believer, is pleasing God. That's right. And when you please God, you are you're definitely not going to please everybody. Even the closest persons to you, you're not going to please them. But you make sure when you're pleasing God that you are pleasing God. You're not just making decisions just to make someone upset, but you're making a decision based on the fact that this pleases God, and you know it pleases God. You see what I'm saying? You don't want your mind quite mad at you just because you did something. You want If she upset with you, you want to be upset because you made a decision for Christ. And in that making a decision for Christ, Christ is going to reveal to her what it was all about. Your decision to be obedient. To obey. He'll take care of all the what? Loose ends. If you do it in love. If you do it through the Spirit. Christ will never fail you. He will never fail you. He says, I will lead you. I will guide you into all truth. Trust in the Lord what? With all your heart. All your heart. And your heart consists of what? Your mind, your will, and your soul. And they can get all away. Satan can attack your mind. And your mind just like a... Just like a uh, a water hose. Spring that way. Mind is running. He attack your emotions. <laughs> you attack it on one side. You can see something. Makes you happy. And that, 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 that thing that you see can actually enable you or, or, deter, or actually get you to make a decision based on what you saw. The reality of it is, it was just there for you to see. And for you, make a decision on what you have saw and how you are going to have it. Sometimes it's just, Lord, help me here. Let go. Say, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> Gracious man, Lord, help me. And sometimes you, you go to a store or to a mall, that's all you have to preach the whole time. There. Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, help me. I mean, you ain't got, you sitting there, Lord, help me. I can go, go out in the car and sit. Just, you got to guard your own mind here. That's right, you don't want the mind be bombarded all the time. You want to go. Many times Jesus had to get up and leave a crowd and escape it. So when you see something that's not good for you and the Holy Spirit want you, hey, get out. Don't sit there and gawk at it. Don't sit there and gawk at it. And you, Wake up, uh, your mind, your mind then is not on Jesus, it's on all that gawking you saw. And by doing so, your mind it, 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 it's not under the leadership of the Holy Spirit the rest of the day. What's under your mind is what you saw. Satan is quick, nasty like that. He's nasty. Yes, he is. No good. Any questions, please? Or any testimony?